Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of my tutorial series in SFM. Today I'm going to show you the basics of animation and models, and I'm going to show you how to use the tools down here to get them to work. Now, back in our work camera, and our, our actual camera is still here, that we spawned in the last video. We're going to use the animation set editor in the top left of the screen. This open area on SFM to put our models in. But you're probably curious how that we do that. And another thing you should notice, when I spawn a model inside of the animation set editor, it'll always spawn in front of camera one. But you're going to right click here and go to create animation set for new model. I'm going to be using the Half-Life 2 models. Sorry TF2 fans, I, I don't like Team Fortress 2. That's just me. Um, we're all fans of a different game. I'm pretty sure you understand. Pick one of the groups. One of the models in one of these groups. I'm going to select in the HL2 folder, Humans, Group 1, Male 6. And click Open. You now see that the model is inside of our animated scene here in front of the camera in a T-shaped position. Unlike in Gmod, they're not ragdolls, so you can't exactly rely on physics to move the model around. But you can use the editors I just showed you, motion editor, rotation tool, and movement tool to move your selected model in the SFM around in the viewport. Now let me teach you about these first. Timelines for editing the main video in the aftermath after you're done animating everything in the primary viewport. This is the motion editor. I use this entirely. People can use the graph editor and the graph editor is for advanced animation editing. I do use the graph editor a little bit, but it's more advanced. And everyone here is absolute beginner, so I'm going to show you how to use the motion editor. The motion editor is also used with the screen tool here. The screen tool here is the motion tool what I call it. And first we're going to look at the model entirely. Left click on the male 061 and you see that when I'm inside the motion editor tool and the motion editor all these lines pop up this big yellow circle appears in the middle of the model here and let me tell you what this means the lines are for the animations for each individual body part there's a line or, or a graph as some people call it for every single body part in order to move the model around with the motion tool you're going to click this middle part of this circle here and just hold left click and move the model around to move it. If you want to rotate it with the motion editor tool, control C, you're going to click 
outside of the middle part of the motion editor. You can rotate it all around that you want to. But I'm going to control Z that, so it will go back in its original position. Same thing with clicking this circle. Now the rotation tool. Rotation tool is, is almost exactly like the motion editor tool in rotation. The blue line is for uh, rotating the model the way th the camera is positioned. Say, let's move the camera over here, the work camera. And I use the blue circle. Instead of going left to right, now he's going forward and backward. I'll rotate him. The red part of the rotation tool is for if you left click it and hold it, it moves the model left or right, depending on how you move your mouse. If you hold left click on the green circle and go up and down, it'll move the character forward and backward. If you hold left click on the blue part, it rotates the character left to right. Now if you just hold click on the outside of the lines, but inside of the circle here, see how it's all highlighted yellow? It'll rotate the model wherever you move your mouse and rotate it. The movement tool, simple. Red arrows to go back and forth. Green arrow is to move it left to right. And the blue arrow is to move it up and down. Let me teach you about the motion editor part. Why it turns yellow when I move my model around. When I move the model around, uh, in order to save the position it's at, I hit enter. Yellow means it's unchanged. And if I hit enter on my keyboard, now the model is going to stay in that position. But right now I'm going to go back into the motion editor tool. And now if you want to paste the model to the ground, you hold left click on the middle of the circle here and hold shift okay there seems to be a problem here because I'm outside of the viewport you always just want to make sure you're inside of the map when you hold left click that's something I forgot to tell you too because if I'm in the wall and hold left click on the middle part here and hit shift. It's going to spawn outside the wall. So make sure the work hammer is always outside of the wall. But now I'll back to what I was doing. To paste the model to the ground, we're going to hold left click in the work camera on the middle part here, circle, and hold shift. As long as you hold shift, a model will say on the ground at all times, no matter how you move your mouse. But if we let go of shift and move the model around, it's no longer pasted to the ground. You have to hold shift at all times for the model to be stuck to the ground. Hit enter and save it in the middle of the area. All right. Importing NPC animations onto the model. This is an easy way to animate models because you can edit existing stock Valve animations in SFM because they actually allow you to do that. 
you could use a pre-existing animation and animate off of that. Right click on male or whatever model you import it in. I'm using the Half-Life models. Half-Life 2, exact. But we're going to go to Import. After we right-click on the model, we want to use Import Sequence, not Animation. Animation is for a custom animation that you've made. We're only going to use the top part of the sequence part here. I'll explain what Generate Root Motion means in a minute. Once you left click on a sequence, you could use your arrow keys on your keyboard to simply go up without having to scroll the mouse. That's what I use when I uh, scroll through the sequences. Alright, say we're going to have this model walk forward. Generate root motion means that wherever the model is moving, it will automatically set up a motion, a, a motion trail that the character will follow. So if we're too lazy and don't want to make a straight walking animation uh, as long or as short as we want it to, we're going to leave generate root motion checked. And you see down here in the motion set editor, everything turns squiggly lined. And it's, well, yellow again or orange. Whatever you want to say it is, really. But the squiggly lines represent that multiple body parts have been moved or are moving. Click enter. Now, when you press play, on your video, you can either go to camera one or, or stay in the work camera. When we click play, you'll see that the camera, well, I'm moving the camera myself, but you see that the model will continuously follow the path until it hits the end. If you want to say, let's say, uh, stop the animation right here. Down in the motion set editor, we're going to left click and drag the beginning part all the way to the part that we want deleted. right here. This is the playhead, in case you're curious. I'll always keep the playhead aligned with the beginning part here, which these are actually keyframes. But when we move it to the spot that we want him to stop walking at, I actually prefer keeping it right here. So you can exactly see what you're messing with. But if you hit delete with it right here, and the model's right there, we we'll want the model to stop and hit delete on your keyboard. It deletes the rest of the animation when he walks there. And he stops exactly right there. Now let's say we want to add another stock animation to this. We're going to go to the exact spot with this beginning part of the green selection here. We're going to go to the exact part where he stopped. If you mouse wheel up, you'll zoom in on your 
selected scene here on the seconds. And he stopped exactly right there. Keep this part highlighted. Right there. You don't even have to hold anything on your keyboard or mouse. Just keep this part selected. Right click on the mail that I'm using. Go to import sequence. And we're just going to put a new animation here. Let's make Max scared. For non-movement animations that are going forward and backward, for non-movement, uncheck Generate Root Motion. And you're going to see this turn orange, hit Enter. Now, when we drag the playhead there, he's instantly going to go into that animation. But if we hit previous clip, which takes you back to the previous clip or the beginning, very beginning of the clip. We're only using one clip. That's why we only have one actual camera. But when we go to the beginning, we'll see he walks, then instantaneously stops. This animation here looks very robotic because it instantly just goes to the scared animation. We want that changed. Let's say we want this character to smoothly go into the animation, you know, the scared animation from walking or realistically easy hold left click at the beginning of this selection and you could either uh, just highlight the area right here where uh, he starts to go into the second animation or you can hit control A and select it all and smooth the entire animation together. But for right now, we're just going to smooth the part where he enters the second animation here. You're going to go to your procedurals, left click on smooth, and drag it all the way to the right. Hit enter. Now you see when he walks, he'll smoothly go into that animation instead of instantly switching to that animation. But if you want to smooth it even more, you can. There, that, mu that looks a whole lot more realistic, don't it? A little bit quick, but still. The more you smooth it, the more smoother the animation's gonna look. I'm gonna control Z's that because it looked good with just double smoothing and not triple smoothing. Hit enter. Now when we click previous clip and go back to the beginning of the, this uh animation model moving forward it looks almost perfect all right so I've taught you about NPC animations and how to uh, well stock animations and how to combine them in SFM to make a double animation. Same thing goes if you're going to make a third animation. Now you have learned how to stop an animation, add 
a second stock animation to the pre-existing animation that you already put inside of SFM to use. In the third part, I'll show you how to manually move the model and manual animate off of pre-existing animations in the third part. Until then, I'll see you lads later.